very good evening to uh, all of you and a uh, very warm welcome to a very special guest today uh, mr uh, mv shreyams kumar mr kumar thank you for joining us on the special edition of uh, godakshin exchange for media series of webinar and uh, first of all let me start by congratulating you for your emphatic win uh, to the upper house of parliament we look forward to you being there in the elder house of parliament and contributing your immense knowledge and uh, acumen to the uh, decision making in this country so congratulations thank you and, uh, and also uh, congratulations from all of us at exchange for media happy onam to you it's a auspicious day when we join today is uh, 24th of august onam season is uh, uh, upon us uh, onam is on as we as we do this webinar so happy onam to you we should the same we should all of you the same happy onam thank you so much i don't need to introduce my guest today but you know just for to set up the perspective and uh, uh, set the ground let me just tell you uh, what uh, mr uh, kumar uh, has accomplished through his illustrious and long career as you all know he is the managing director at matrubhumi printing and publishing company which publishes the matrubhumi daily and 11 other uh, periodicals including travel monthly matrubhumi yatra film and lifestyle magazine matrubhumi also runs uh, a news channels a, ch a channel as well as a youth uh, television channel the flagship matrubhumi uh, has 15 editions nine of which were started under mr kumar's watch uh, it has a daily total readership of 1.23 crore readers as per as per irs uh, q4 and it is amongst the top 10 dailies as per air irs in india <clears throat> one of the very important uh, things close to mr kumar's heart is his dedication and commitment to environmental values and he envisioned matrubhumi seed the student empowerment for environmental development program uh, a few years back to impart environmental consciousness to the next generation by sensitizing students in nearly 7000 uh, uh, schools and that's a commendable initiative mr kumar also happens to be on the board of uh, directors of the news broadcasting association the national news broadcasters association he is on the press uh, trust of india board of directors he is also an executive committee member of the indian newspaper society and also the chairman of the kerala regional committee of indian newspaper society apart from being the president of the kerala television uh, federation thank you mr kumar uh, for joining us and welcome again for this uh, webinar as i said at the beginning onam uh, season is upon us uh, i'll start by asking you uh, a very elementary question how is onam shaping up in kerala how is the mood there given uh, what we've all gone through this year <clears throat> not great but it's not bad either you know like uh, there is a lot of people going for shopping and because of the restriction uh, most of them are not uh, able to uh, move so freely but today the government is uh, at least not saying that uh, the shops can be open till 9 o'clock in the night during onam period so that's a good relief there's a larger window for people to go and shop so hopefully you know things will pick up but kerala has always been a resilient society you know like we have faced the floods two floods then uh, a lot of crises but you know the people of kerala is a, a different lot they always uh, stay together when there is a crisis and I, i'm pretty confident that it's only a matter of time before we move on but uh, if i were to ask you specifics uh, you you run a large media business and there's a lot of dependence upon uh, other corporates for media companies to earn money especially uh, i mean advertising money and you have a very good ringside view of all the sectors that are uh, working in the uh, economy whether it is auto consumer durables retail which part of the economy which parts of the economy do you think are more impacted and are kind of slower to come back almost every sector is impacted except for some digital businesses if you look at manufacturing is affected badly because people are not able to come for work the service industry service industry is doing slightly better because you can work at yeah. so by and large it's affected impacted all the industries as that some of the industries have thrived because of this some of the online delivery uh, you know system like uh, zomato and all that yeah. uh, those those digital guys have, are thriving and uh, i must say in kerala if you look at the smaller shops uh, they they were doing good business because earlier people were going to the big uh, supermarkets and yes uh, so there's another side to it you know like there's a lot of small business which is uh, doing pretty well uh, especially the local ones yeah. the, Area where people depend on that small shop for 
uh, your requirements. And you know, th that is, that's another side to the story. And uh, media is also affected very badly because uh, from April onwards, the ad revenues were practically zero. But fortunately in Kerala, the distribution was intact. In fact, even after uh, the spread of Corona to this level, uh, the number of copies we lost is less compared to other markets uh, because the distribution system is pretty good here. Yeah. So hopefully, like uh, you know, the industry, uh, like uh, all sectors, will start reviving. It can't remain like this forever. It's only a matter of time before we bounce back uh, with a lot more vigor and a lot more action. And I'm sure, uh, though this year uh, economy GDP is supposed to be having a negative growth, but I'm sure next year it will go at a much higher rate, and uh, it will. Uh, you know, we'll come back to normal. The new normal. You have a very good grip on what's happening on ground in Kerala, and RBI and many other national and international agencies have uh, released uh, growth forecasts for the Indian economy, and most of them project growth to fall this year. Do you think Kerala will beat the national average and will be better off, or will be in the same range as what? Uh... Data I accessed uh, the revenue loss, the GDP loss of Kerala is better on, better on a higher side. Uh, I think it comes to fourth or fifth position in the country. Right. So Kerala's economy is also affected. But then, you know, like uh, Kerala has a, uh, you know, like uh, a lot of remittance uh, coming from other. Uh, I was going to come to that. Yes. Yeah. So that way, if you ask me, I mean, GDP growth is, will be minus. But then even now, people have some disposable income. Because see, the job loss has not been that great. For example, you take uh, Matsubumi, for instance, we have not fired a single person. Neither we had for a salary cut. So that way, you know, like... Uh, you must be amongst the very few rare media companies in this country. I mean, I don't know of too many uh, which have not, uh, you know, let go of people or cut, uh, you know, salaries of uh, co-workers. You know, we always believe in one philosophy that 90% is mind. You know, it's people. So... They, they are our biggest uh, asset. Yes. Money will come and go, but having good people is more important for uh, uh, you know, long-term growth of any, any organization. The first thing people, people do is that, you know, uh, cut salaries or send them off. We, we are trying our best not to do it. As long as possible, we won't do it. So, you know, so we, that way we have a human face. Uh, some, may, some may say it is uh, not the right thing to do. But I feel so. We even declared, declared bonus, a token bonus for Olin. That's fantastic uh, to hear. It's quite a difficult decision to get, but it's a very token uh, bonus uh, compared to what they used to get. And yeah. as a company also, when we declare dividend, we ensure that uh, the, the uh, it's a good year, we ensure that uh, uh, the, uh, every employee also gets a benefit of it, not just a shareholder. So they may get uh, half a month's basic pay as extra pay or one month pay as extra. So some, most of the year they draw 12 and a half or 13 months salary. Yeah. Apart from the other benefits. And the government employees are also taken care of pretty well because the government structure in Kerala works more efficiently and very different as compared to other parts of the country. Yeah, here, you know, like there are, if you look at the social infrastructure of Kerala, the number of schools, number of hospitals, number of other public utility, a very high, so a lot of employment is there. So that also, in a way, uh, helps people a lot. That's uh, right. But there are, of course, there, there is, uh, uh, you know, unemployment here. There is financial stress among certain sections of the society, especially the farmers. Uh, they are facing a very tough time across the country, not just in Kerala, uh, for many reasons. Uh, I don't want to go into the details of it. I'm also being a farmer. <laughs> I know a little bit about it, so uh, let's not get into that uh, topic anyway. Uh, so uh, that way, has got a you know like uh, what would it say uh, a social asset building mechanism, which helps people uh, yes. to have better quality of life, and that is reflected here. And I, I'm very curious to know about you know two engines of Kerala's economy, two important engines. One is the tourism sector. Yeah. Uh, which, you know, the season is upon us right after Onam, the main tourism season starts and all the humongous inflow of remittances that come from Gulf. 
the first part i'm guessing is very significantly impacted the tourism sector and that has a very large role to play in employment generation economic activity so how do you see that sector picking up what's your view on that tourism. and the second yeah, yeah. Yes, and and the second part is the remittances do you see the remittances economy also kind of uh, taking a hit this year yeah the first part is tourism has taken a big hit because nobody's traveling uh, you know like even i, I travel very less yeah i love you know, what is uh, what is it I, I i love traveling a lot but i'm not able to travel similarly no tourists are coming here but i'm told some local tourism is happening in some of the properties so there is a slight uh, movement but it's not enough it's a completely bad situation on yeah. tourism. tourism helps kerala's economy a lot as you know it's a beautiful place uh, so much of greenery and the western guards and the midland and the coast and the backwaters it's a very unique ecosystem so people love to come here but then uh, hopefully in the next 2 3 months uh, uh, you know we will we will be in a better position for people to travel to kerala and you know uh, enjoy the beautiful nature and the landscape of kerala on the second part you know like uh, remittances there is some problem because you know like most of the countries where these people are especially the the gulf you see yeah. Dubai, there is a bit of uh, uh, you know problem there because you know like the economy is not picked up yes uh, and in other parts of the world again remittance is coming but it's it's not an extremely bad situation but it's not uh, you know like buoyant like before no the inflow but one thing is that now people stop coming back uh, because the things are uh, better in uh, most of the gulf region so they start uh, like the inflow of uh, people who are working in the gulf to kerala has slowed down considerably actually yeah so that means again there is hope that you know uh, the people staying back there are working and uh, again the flow will start uh, improving uh, that's what we are hoping i hope i answered your question yes yes absolutely uh, and that's good to know that you know the inflow back of people has you know kind of tapered off because i know last 2 3 years there's been a lot of inflow back because of local law changes in places like right. dubai uae oman and that has kind of also set the economy back uh what i meant because of covid a lot of people were coming back home that has kind of right. tapered off right right I'm right it was still there yeah to go you are now also part of the parliament the upper house of parliament and you will be part of uh, important decision making happen happening at the national level what are the few things and you've been you've been you know uh, a media owner you be you you've been in politics for a while and you've also dealt very closely with the government machinery what are the few things that you believe can be uh, the government has taken a lot of steps as we've seen over the last few months to alleviate distress in the economy what are the some more steps that you'd like to see the government taking both at the central and at the state level to kind of re-energize the economy even more than what is happening right now see one is the uh, uh, first of all like as you said the upper house and the house of elders do i look that elderly but i'm not so <laughs> and we have been in politics for generation i'm the uh, well, i i'm pretty sure i haven't read the statistics but i'm sure you will be one of the youngest in the upper house that i'm very sure of with the I, dynamism and enthusiasm you bring to the table uh we've been in politics for four generations now from my great grandfather to my grandfather to my father to me so it's been part of our you know family tradition uh but if you ask me i'm a, not a full time politician i've been elected to the assembly twice from kolkata so i know the uh, problem faced by common people now coming back to the economy like uh, now the moratorium is going to end yeah Uh, the question is whether you want to extend it or go to, uh, they, they, they decided not to extend it even if you extend it you have to pay the interest yes and that is going to serious business because in the sectors so next month onwards repayment starts and the government uh, you know like a uh, lot of schemes have come out with it but it's basically it is all borrowing you know taking a uh, uh, established line of credit with the banks anyway like if the business is not by and not to pond in uh, borrowing money so some of the steps taken has not really uh, you know uh, helped the economy that's what i feel right 
moves could have been taken, some of the restructuring could have been done, and every crisis is an opportunity. That's how I look. At it. So, uh, as a parliamentarian, the emphasis I give uh, mostly on, uh, you know, like uh, environmental issues, of course, the secular fabric of the country, uh, then uh, uh, the problems faced by farmers. Uh, you know, like we sitting at this level sometimes do not know what is happening at the ground. Since I've, I've, right. been, I've been representing a uh, constituency, then I have to be with people and I, I, I've always been with them. So I understand uh, there are real problems, you know, that uh, people at this level uh, doesn't want to, uh, you know, like uh, discuss, especially in a webinar like this. They are looking at, uh, you know, what are the, uh, what the industry is doing and all that stuff. But then, uh, when people are life of people is impacted to this level, I think that uh, rings an alarm, and we have to wake up to that. So these are the uh, major things I would focus, especially on environment, because uh, uh, you know, like the new uh, notification in EIA has got a wider ramification. You know, like it can yes. impact uh, right. us. Uh, it, it's it's a future generation we are playing with. So that's one thing we really need to uh, you know think about. And sustainable development. It's easy to say sustainable development, but it's not easy to achieve. That's right. These are things very easy to say, but to uh, reach there is not very easy. It requires hard work, yes. It requires a lot of, and also like in uh, today's, uh, uh, India's GDP is projected to be less by more than two digit. That is what the, uh, some of the first quarter studies are saying. That's right. Yeah, obviously that will have an impact on every uh, sector, as I said earlier. So we need to really see like whether the the, the, the COVID uh, package announced by the government have started dealing the result. We need to wait and see. I think it's it's very heartening to uh, see that somebody who's uh, so passionate about the environment uh, going to Rajya Sabha because I think we need voices like you there. Uh, one thing has become increasingly clear over the last two decades, especially that uh, business activity, economic growth and uh, being sensitive and aware of what's happening to the environment are two are not mutually exclusive agendas. They need to go hand in hand because, you know, economic growth over the long term is sustainable only if we take care of the environment. Otherwise, one sided economic growth is, you know, just going to destroy our you know planet. It is going to destroy our own home and it is not going to uh, result into prosperity for a large number of people. So I'm, I'm very happy that, you know, that's an issue that you are going to take to the parliament. Let me uh, change track a little bit and come to a uh, uh, core business that you've been part of and your family has been part of many generations. Uh, your uh, newspaper business, which is your flagship uh, daily Matrubhumi. Uh, tell us aspects. One is obviously advertising. Uh, yeah. One of the things that I understand uh, is that- I uh, tell you because it, uh, you know, there's some network issue and your frame right. was frozen. So I, didn't yeah, I, will, I will repeat that. I said, let me just change track and come to your, uh, the business that you've been part of uh, for many years now that you've uh, led admirably, which is your flagship daily business. And COVID obviously has hit all newspapers really hard across the country. Kerala, I would imagine, has been a, a slightly better off state primarily because circulation revenues constitute a higher proportion of what it does for many other players nationally and in other regions. Uh, the flip side of that uh, is that, you know, there is lesser headroom to grow when it comes to uh, circulation revenues. So what's your outlook on the print business? Because as I said at the beginning, technology is bringing in sweeping change into the uh, traditional media businesses. And I'm sure, and that's one of the reasons you've diversified into television. You have a digital play now, but print constitutes a main uh, pillar of your business. What's your uh, sense of, you know, where print is headed nationally in other regions and especially in Kerala? So Kerala is a very strong uh, a print. You know, if you look at the reach of newspaper in Kerala, into, uh, only recently, uh, you know, the CNS have come near the newspaper. Because the reading habits are pretty solid here. Yes. And I, I don't see, I've been hearing that newspaper is on its way out for the last two, two and a half decades. Are not seen it probably see like in us and all you know like most of the companies are uh, listed and there is a heavy pressure on profits and they always work on a 25 30 35 percent profit and that dips then yes. the dip is bad for them 
here we are quite okay with lower margins because we do we do, we do need margins but we are okay with lower margins and uh, by and large uh, you know like a lot of newspaper companies are not listed public except a few so the pressure from the shareholders are not much so we look at uh, you know like how do we uh, uh, reinvest in the business at the same time moving on from there uh, so kerala uh, you know like look at the demographics the number of people who are 35 plus is very high in kerala so that yeah. means you have already started reading newspaper and they'll continue to do so and regarding the cover price we always believe kerala always believes that kerala newspaper always believes that there is a price for content it cannot be given free now if you look at the penetration here i think uh, around 60% of the households or more are subscribing to newspaper you look at the average issue readership you can say almost uh, you know uh, everybody is uh, almost everybody is reading a newspaper so uh, the headroom for get, uh, getting more circulation revenue is less because it's it's not an, I, won't, i won't say it's a saturated market but it's a very mature market yes uh, unlike uh, the hindi bell where there's still a lot of scope so we always believe that uh, content as a price because you know like there is a lot of uh, expenditure you have to incur for creating content you have to uh, pay for quality journalism you should have your infrastructure you should have your network all that requires a huge amount of investment how can that be given free yes and everything cannot be subsidized by advertisement so a newspaper to have a stand on its own also needs another stream of revenue which is not enough to completely run the newspaper but still the dependency is slightly less at the same time when more more ad revenues are coming good we make more profits absolutely yeah absolutely i think the, that's something that a lot of uh, players uh, newspapers in other regions can learn from kerala newspapers so literacy rates might not be comparable but i think you you hit the nail on the head when you said that content needs to be valued and if the consumer does not value content then you, you know uh, It, he he or she does not value the uh, the product over a period of time and i think in covid that has become even more starkly clear when advertising revenues have suddenly fallen there is no circulation revenue to fall back upon uh, whereas if you look at the tv industry especially the large entertainment channels national or hindi entertainment channels despite fall in advertising revenues they've all all had at least solid uh, subscription revenues to fall back upon primarily because you know they made sure that over time they got consumers to start paying for content though even now what consumers pay for television content in india is much lesser as compared to global counterparts but there is still some solid money on the table so i think that's a very important message to uh, uh, uh if, if, if you see kerala the consumption has really uh, uh, gone up during covid stress and a lot of people are reading newspaper and the time spent on re- uh, new, uh, new, uh, reading newspapers has increased time spent on television has increased television uh, reach has increased everywhere digital also in we, we yes. see 30 40% spurt in our number of visits per month in our digital platforms in our other digital product, uh, products as well uh, so uh, as, as as you're saying yeah, yeah but in digitally the what's the problem with the digital business it's almost everything is free yes it is free now there also you have to invest your money in people technology on your network you know like on your uh, you know like bandwidth and stuff like that but how how are you going to get that money now if you look at the uh, uh, you know like digital business in india the, 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 i think last year ad revenue was around 14 14500 crores yes about 80% have gone to facebook and google well that's right yeah, absolutely 9400 crore to google and about 2300 or 400 crore to uh, you know uh, facebook so it's about 11500 crore And the rest of the entire industry uh, got only uh, maybe less than three thousand crores. Yes. So here, the digital content has to be priced. That is the next time. If you look at New York Times, you know the first time their subscription revenues were taken the advertising. Did you notice that? Yes. Yes. Last month, that was a trend because they've been solidly building this up, you know, like subscription base. over the period of time creating the quality content and people are happy pay and now everything is content anybody can write any content they want and that can be spread and there are a lot of people believe in, you know like 
you know, who, who believes in this kind of uh, false news and stuff like that. So digital business also needs, uh, you know, some, uh, uh, some transition is required in terms of content, uh, not the other side of technology, but when it uh, uh, comes to uh, providing, uh, you know, credible content, uh, digital has a problem. And, you know, we are uh, actually, we can surely say that our content is legitimate, uh, yes. 99% is uh, correct. There could be mistakes, of course, I'm not saying no. And it's, uh, a lot of it is original and uh, it's uh, credible also. Well, let me mention a personal experience when uh, the lockdown was at its peak. A lot of news in every city was floating around about what's happening, which areas have got more cases. And I, re I very vividly recall that the only credible source of information we would rely on was what came from a newspaper. True. Because digital, there is so much content available and these WhatsApp forwards and social media, you, you really cannot believe anything. So I think the credibility of a newspaper mastered became even more starkly clear to at least somebody like me, you know, who gets so much of digital content. And that's true for a lot of other uh, consumers as well. It's a curated content. You see, like uh, the newspaper, there's a process of creating the content. When it comes in, there are people checking it, uh, you know, like verifying it is correct or not. That's why it's credible. I'm not saying every newspaper is, but then there could be political bias for newspapers. Mm -hmm. so, but in terms of providing these kind of content, I think a newspaper is the best. Yeah. Uh, you know, like uh, social media. Uh, that's mm -hmm. what I think. And I think uh, the, how are Kerala uh, players taking this up, you know, uh, charging for digital content because nationally, I know that some of the national players also tried it in the last few months where you create a digital paywall. Uh, business standard, as we know, has been doing that for the last three years. How have well been those experiments in Kerala? Can you uh, tell us more? Well, it's, it's like, it's not started in Kerala. What I'm trying to say is that we have to educate uh, the users that, you know, they have to pay for the content. And yes. for that, there has to be some kind of unity among the players. Mm -hmm. I think that is also uh, being discussed at various association levels. And how do we do this? You know, like, uh, how do we uh, get money for our content? It's, it's not easy as of now. It take a, it'll take a while, but it is going to happen. So as a, as an INS board member, would you like INS to kind of also take a stand on this? INS is. I mean, they are discussing with the uh, you know, Digital Publishing uh, Association, I forgot that name. Uh, they are working together on uh, many areas uh, uh, on this. And what are the other areas as an INS board member, if I can ask you, what are the other areas where you think INS can kind of work with the government and other industry bodies to kind of, you know, uh, uh, ensure uh, better uh, viability for the newspaper business in, in, in these times? Uh, interface with the government, more, more than INS government. INS uh, is interacting with the government on various issues. First, it was a newsprint news uh, import duty. Uh, and from 10%, it was reduced to 5%. And we still believe it should be 0% duty. And second was on the tramping of, uh, you know, anti-dumping duty. Yeah. A lot of issues, uh, uh, you know, like INS is taking up with the government. And the recent order by the uh, Ministry of Outreach and, uh, you know, uh, saying that all public sector undertaking, we have to provide them, we have to extend the DAP rates with them. So INS is working on all this, We're standing united on certain things. My, most of the newspapers were part of the INS. So a lot of industry-related issues INS is working on. And of course, I'm not there in the day-to-day -day affairs, I'm just in the committee. So there is a president and, uh, you know, uh, various committee chairmen and the deputy president and the vice president. Uh, plus the uh, when I uh, talk to you about INS, uh, there's been an interesting thing that IBF has done. If you've seen, you've seen the evolution of IBF over the last 15 years, the industry body got created and it got very strongly involved into advertiser related issues also. And there are, there have been many instances in the past where IBF as an industry body is uh, very solidly together when it came to, you know, rate pressures from advertisers, from agencies and so on. Do you think INS also uh, uh, at some point of time uh, 
should stand uh, where all publishers should, publishers stand together and take stances on rates because you know the pressure on rates post covid world will only go up now for newspapers i i know but it's very difficult because each newspaper has got their own business models how they work and it's very difficult to tell them okay well, these are the benchmarks you don't go below the don't go below, below that but regionally we try to do it to to some extent but not to the politic to the extent i don't think ins can do much on that uh, ibf uh, collection of course you know like uh, ins is good the uh, uh, the payment from the agencies and all and ibf is also good in that i'm not aware of this nationally that they are taking a stand on uh, rates i didn't uh, not well it's that. not now but in the past they have in the past so ibf how, has done that a few how times how has it worked really yeah of course uh, you know it, it's not it, so easy to yeah, kind of this can work it can be did some work during the election time saying that let's not give a rate below a certain percentage but you know like a lot of individual businesses associations to just uh, you know like like to, to address the issues faced by the industry uh, yes. you, can't, you can't have a stand that everybody uh, gives only this percentage of uh, you know uh, discount and all that and that that's not correct also yes uh tell me uh since we talk about the newspaper business and we uh, over the last few years we've seen uh, television becoming very strong in kerala uh, we you have a news channel uh, you also run a youth channel uh, a few years back if i recall correctly uh, mathubhumi also had plans to enter the gc entertainment space do you still uh, have those plans in place do you plan to do that uh, any time in the near future uh well as of now no because right now we are uh, you know like as i said every uh, uh, crisis is an opportunity we are so we are tra- trying to transform our organization it's a 97 year old legacy what we have we are aligning the organization to the new ways of business which we are doing and right now this uh, i'm taking this time for transforming it to, uh, to a very smart and effective uh, organization which is which can you know, face the challenges in future not just the short term the long term so there are a lot of uh, such internal uh, things happening uh, which is pretty interesting and exciting and people are also excited about it would you like to share some highlights of what you're doing how are you transforming a company which is almost 100 years old i know that you complete 100 years in another 3 years i would not i wouldn't want to share much of details but as i said yeah. but transformation happens from people from the mind uh, that's what you should at the end of the day they have to they are the ones who are conducting your you know your operations so what what you are trying to do is you are telling them look uh, uh, things are changing so your way of thinking has to change and we are not taking too much of time to do that and people are adopting to the changes it is good to see like basically what happens over the years you know department will become very uh, you know like become silos you know and they may not we have so many verticals and that's a great opportunity for us how you know like the uh, uh, we are uh, doing uh, uh, things now uh, how as a media house we can help your business and uh, add impact to something which we are looking at the queens we'll ask the client to uh, tell us his challenge and we'll come out with a surprise uh, you know solution for him so like we have to proactively do that so we know the market very well we have, we have some insights you know uh, i told you in the beginning for example if you look at the uh, consumer durables uh, uh, in uh, you know like uh, here in kerala what is happening interesting is that people are not window shopping only those people who wants to shop are going there and they are not hopping from one shop to another to find out where the prices are going so whenever there is an ad coming in the newspaper in fact uh, one of the major retailer told me a uh, few days back uh, that uh, four days back he had a full page ad in the newspapers and he says the business was almost as good as the peak of onum day you wow. understand before onum started fantastic that means uh, the lower number of footfalls but who are coming attra- uh, uh, you know like it's translating to a business so these are the kind of you know a lot of insights and also like uh, the the first uh, uh, the, the the data we are going to work on 
the number of users we have, as I said, we have uh, 12 million uh, 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 visitors on our Matribumi web portal. We have about 40 million, uh, 4 million uh, followers on Facebook. We are also having a very, uh, you know, like a new uh, division for, not, not a new division, we are focusing on the social media part of it. Yes. So if you look at the mag number of magazines we have, the channels we have, the reach, what we can get in Kerala through Matribumi is something which we can, uh, you know, like we can very confidently offer, uh, you know, any, uh, uh, any industry or any, you know, like sector that we can deliver. So, like, as I said, combining these different verticals, that's one of the transformation. But though we, you know, like it is being said over the years that, you know, the 360 degree, but tell me how, how, where all it has worked. To be very honest, That's so you right. see to talk about you know, yes. all these numbers, and you know, when it comes to really translating into business, there's a lot of hurdles. Yeah, yeah. So uh, what we're trying to do is on one side, I mean, the transformation is total for the organization. On the sales front, this is what we are trying to do. We are combining it. We are telling our different sales team that you know this is our strength. The combined strength of Matrubhumi is huge. The individual products also have their own strength and standing. But yes. there's something more we can offer to a, a to a client. So we, we are, you know, like uh, throw us your uh, the problems that you come out with a supply solution. I think uh, it's, it's a very important one, point. That's yeah. one area where the transformation is happening, but there are a lot of other areas. So the, the, as I said, oh, the silos, ensuring that, you know, like uh, uh, the circulation department or editorial, they all work together and, you know, things like that. A lot of things are happening. Yeah, I think uh, it's a very important point. All this. Sorry? Since we have a lot of time to do, do this because you're not able to. <laughs> but you know, as you said at the beginning, every crisis is an opportunity, right? I mean, this crisis has given you the time and bandwidth to execute the things that might have got delayed uh, in the normal course of business. So I think it's a godsend opportunity to do this. And yeah. I think a very important point you make, and I was having a chat with another news company CEO, is also that uh, I think news products have a very different kind of editorial and content gravitas. Uh, nothing to take away from entertainment products, but when an advertiser comes on a news product, a news platform and integrates his or her brand, uh, the value that delivers, the engagement value that delivers is very different from you know what uh, is delivered through eyeballs when you do the same thing through an entertainment product. And I think that is one messaging that is very, very important for advertisers to see where uh, what you are getting through a news driven editorial product, the value and engagement of that is very entirely different as compared to the eyeballs that you, you know, attract through uh, entertainment product. So I think that's an important point. Uh, sticking on advertisers, Mr. Kumar, uh, you, you, you work with national and retail advertisers. And as you said, uh, retail advertisers have invested a lot of faith. So have national advertisers. But if there are two, three things that uh, you would want to say to uh, national advertisers, brands and agencies, uh, things that they are missing when they are planning campaigns and how they are looking at the Kerala market, what, what, the, what, do, what would those things be? I'm, I'm happy that you asked this question because Kerala has to be seen as a, uh, you know, like a different market. If you look at uh, Kerala, you know, like, for example, uh, you know, like fighting the COVID crisis, uh, COVID crisis, we are doing well because you look at the social infrastructure here, the social assets. Now, there's a very strong three-tier panchayat system here, decentralized, yeah. decentralized power, uh, like power. The, the, most of the money is spent by the panchayats and the block panchayats and district panchayats, and you have the municipalities and corporations. Yeah. And you have schools in every uh, village. You have uh, health centers in every panchayat. There's a primary health center, then you have the community health center, then you have the, uh, you know, like uh, taluk hospitals, district hospitals, and the medical college. It's, it's something which, uh, you know, like no other state can, uh, you know, boast of. And Kerala, the, if you look at, you look at FMCG for, for instance, how much they are spending this year on, uh, uh, print in Kerala. Pretty good. Yes. Every day, I see, almost every day I see a front page uh, you know, ad or you know, like half page or a full page coming in the newspaper almost every day, FMCG. 
That may not be true in other markets. But in Kerala, the difference is that people read newspaper because they buy it. Yeah. They're not getting it for a throwaway price or they, they're not getting it at a rugby rate. Yeah. They are paying 240 rupees per month. And what are they paying for to read? Obviously, when they read, you know, you're getting, you're getting the attention of a reader uh, for, for your communication. It's not just, you know, like eyeballs. You have to get serious people who seriously spend time on the newspaper or on television or whichever medium is consumed in Kerala. And, you know, like it can create a huge impact. Yes. And Kerala, if you look at, if you look at the bike sales in Kerala during the COVID crisis, it's, it's really good. You may not, that may not be the case in other markets. Yes, that's uh, true. quite active in Kerala. You see full pay some of the auto manufacturers, two-wheel manufacturers in Kerala. You look at the retailing. You know, Kerala is not a, it's not a, you know, like big town and a village and, you know, a lot of vacant spaces. It's a continuous township from Kasargo to Chivandra. It's an urban, people, yeah, it's an urban and, village, so to say, yes. Yeah, also you should understand uh, the, the, the benefits percolate down to everybody. Whatever government schemes or this thing, and people are well paid here. Why do you think people from Bengal, Bihar are not coming here? There are 2.5 million uh, migrant workers here. Yeah. Huh? Why do they come? Because they get paid more than any of the states. So the buying power of a common man in Kerala is much higher than any other state. That has been missed out by the planners. So they you know, look at uh, overall scenario and, you know, they don't look at, sometimes uh, they don't look at the specific market, what the market can deliver. You look at cleanliness in Kerala. Everybody has a bath. They keep the place very clean. So they require a lot of these kind of stuff. FMCG products. So you know, like the personal hygiene and the hygiene they keep around there, the place of stay. A lot of things. You know, like Kerala itself, uh, uh, see, population-wise, we may not be that great. But if you spend some money in Kerala, the impact what you're going to get is much more than reaching out to a much larger market. Because here, reaching out is easier. You publish an ad in a newspaper like ours, you're reaching a certain uh, amount of your target audience. That's right, yes. And in fact, that's not small in numbers. That's large in numbers. And it, is, it has paying capacity. Yeah, if you look spending at capacity, the yes. combined reach of Matrabhumi, huh? three out of every four person would, uh, touches a brand every day, one way or the other. Well, around two and a half to 2.75 crore people are engaging, engaged with Madhuram in one way or the other. And as I said, the rural market in Kerala has to be defined in a different way. It's not like, uh, I'm not naming any states, not like other states where, you know, you have a, a situation and there's no poverty here. I can say zero poverty. There are no deaths happening because of poverty, maybe one or two here or there. That was some you know, stray cases. So the buying power of common people in Kerala is much higher than any other state in India. They're not looking at that. It's a completely different market. And it's a, it's a print nominated market. I must say that. By taking Matrubhumi and Manoruma, you're reaching out to almost, almost everybody here. That's right, yes. But in channel, how many channels do you have to take? You understand my point? Yeah. You need a Malayalam channels, you need Tamil channels, you need the Hindi channels, you need sports, a lot of genres. Yeah, yes, yes. Are you here? Yes, use us, uh, use the reach, effective reach of uh, market, you know, like uh, print media and Kerala very effectively. Then you'll see the, your business growing. Yeah, I think uh, it's a, a very relevant and important point because Kerala is unlike any other market when it comes to print readership because of high literacy rates, high penetration, uh, and as you rightly said, high cover price ensures uh, seriousness of the engagement with the product, unlike perhaps some other markets where you know it's so cheap that the reader does not really care uh, what is happening with the paper. But in Kerala, that's, uh, that, uh, that is a very, very important and relevant point. Uh, so tell me uh, if I were to ask an add-on uh, question. Uh, what? Uh, you look at the magazines. 
some of the magazines are priced very high in the sense 50 rupees 30 rupees 35 rupees it's not selling rupees 8 rupees or 10 rupees yes we have two magazines priced at 50 rupees or 60 i don't remember exactly and people are subscribing to it wow. because there is a compelling content for people to buy yes that's why the engagement of our audience the serious and more uh, will be much more fruitful for the advertisers I, I hope uh, advertisers uh, and industry peers from agencies who are listening to this conversation and who we will reach out through subsequent coverage of this webinar are getting this message. The uh, engagement that Kerala publications bring to the table is very different from you know what some other publications might be doing nationally. So the way to look at it is you know not compare apples versus oranges. Compare uh, uh, Kerala publications very differently. Look at Kerala published publications very differently. Let me move on to some uh, personal questions, Mr. Kumar. You uh, uh, you uh, wrote a very moving tribute about your father a uh, uh, couple of months back in Impact. Unfortunately, uh, I never had the opportunity to meet him. Uh, he left us in May this year. Uh, what are the key lessons? Every son learns from his father, and I'm sure you've learned many. But you also had the so working with him for many years, working under him, uh, and learning the tricks of the trade, so to say, uh, from him. What are some of the key lessons that uh, you know you learned from him, which you have continued to implement in your business? And also staying together, we never had separate houses. <laughs> wow, fantastic! That's that's that gladdens my heart in today's age. Unfortunately, I don't have the privilege of living with my parents. They live in Delhi. I'm in Mumbai. My but father, that really, uh, my father was. He's not a typical father, you know, like. He had a different exposure to life, different way of looking at life. There are different philosophies. He's deeply uh, interested in philosophy, and that was his main subject. And for for me, he was a who helps me to move forward. And uh, he, uh, he 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 first he told me that uh, the first thing he did was that my schooling is done in Calcutta. Why not? It's a very backward area. And I studied in a Malayalam medium school. But up to 10th standard, and in spite of having a lot of vehicles at home, a lot of facilities, we come from a very traditional old family. I used to go walking to the school so that I get to know people, you know, who uh, stay around uh, people who stay around me, and I understand the realities of life. And the conversation we used to have was at a different level. Like when I was becoming a teenager, he would say, "Like this is the time when you get attracted to women. As opposite sex, there's nothing wrong." You should. There will be something wrong if you don't. And he would tell me what are the things I need to be ethical about. You understand? And that is when, when I was 13, 14 years old in, in the 80s. I'm 53 now, so you can imagine 40 years back. Wow. That was told to me. You, you know, imagine a father at today's age having a conversation with the son like that. And he always gave me a situation to go. No spoon feeding. At the same time, you know, like. Uh, he'll understand, he'll make us understand things from a different perspective, a larger perspective, uh, with, uh, uh, you know, like where you have uh, uh, a different kind of an approach. As I said, like, we did not uh, take away jobs. We did not cut salaries. We would have deferred salaries, but not cut salaries. It's all because, you know, like the kind of value system uh, which has been brought into the family and, you know, over the period of time, and uh, my grand grandfather was a big landlord, and he he, he was part of a socialist movement. He was he was against the gen uh, the the the, the of the landlords of, uh, you know, he he fought for the uh, peasants. And but uh, you know, like uh, at the same time, uh, that passed on to my father and to me. So for me, uh, it's uh, he taught me how to uh, you know, face a real life situation, not teach me, but give me that realized situation, put me in a, a challenging position so that, you know, uh, you know how to move forward. That's a very That's special relationship. Absolutely. I mean, it can't be more special if you've, you've been his, you know, understudy for so many years and you've learned everything that you have from him. That's just, you know, like he learns from me, he learns from my children. He, he got a very open, he used to have a very open mind. He, he listens to people. It's not one-sided. There are a lot of things which he said he has learned from me as well. So it's, a, it's a not a typical kind of relationship. Even with my children, 
yeah. the kind of conversation he gets into them, you know, like uh, it's quite different. And they are also saddened, and you know, they miss their grandfather so much. Yes, of course. And they they discuss various subjects, interesting things. Uh, you know, like it's good. And how? Uh, tell us a little bit more about your leadership style. How has your leadership uh, style evolved? Uh, you've done a lot of new initiative for the initiatives for the Mathubhumi group, and now, as you say, you are transforming the company. But personally, what is your? Are, are you a very uh, micromanaging, uh, into detailing and hands-on uh, leader, or you uh, believe in uh, putting the right people in the right job and giving them a lot of leeway, a lot of authority, a uh, lot of independence in decision making? Or is I'm, it? A I'm, I'm, both? I'm both. One that I think I'm focused. The end is that I know whatever I'm doing. I'm hands-on. That doesn't mean everything is done by me. I empower people, but I know what they're supposed to be doing. Or you know, like uh, if you don't know your job, you get fooled, right? Yes, absolutely. You have to. Le- the learning is a process, a never-ending process. Till your last, last breath, you're learning something new. So in terms of technology, whether it's printing technology or broadcast technology or whatever it is about people, you know, like you should know about it. You should be able to ask your engineer why why can't you fix it this way. You should be te- you should be able to tell your sales guy, look, this is what it is. That's not that doesn't mean I'm going to sell. I have never sold a single column centimeter of space in my life or a spot in my life. I make people sell. But but you would know the intricacies. You would know. Yeah. You would have a fair idea of you know what your sales team should be doing. That's true. And uh, you know, like uh, agencies do not call me for rates; they call them. That's, that's right. Good. That's empowerment. It's not that I have connection with almost everyone, but it works in a different way. So first of all, you have to understand your business to some extent, and you are you are never fully understood it. Okay, there's new learning every day. And you should be able to share, and also allow you know have little bit of tolerance for mistakes. And tell them. Yeah, very important. I think yeah, correct. Yeah, it's a mistake. We we'll learn from it. If you don't learn, then there's a problem. Mistakes will happen. That's how you learn. So managing people is very important. I wasn't good at that actually. His dad was doing it, and I was bulldozing my way into doing business. Now I understand that I have to do both. So that changes a little bit, not a little bit, a lot. In the way I look at things, and yeah. uh, I think we have a great team. You know, like one thing is that uh, in Matrukum is a lot of people have that uh, you know, like the sense of ownership. It, it's mine. For example, even if our readers we make a mistake, they will ask, "How can Matrukum can make a mistake like this?" I can understand other, uh, some others doing it, but how can you do it? And they're so passionate about it, they would call me. You know, like you, you know, like uh, the, the interaction with our reader. Example: If some of them, if the copy is not delivered on time, they want the paper before six o'clock in the morning. I get calls from many parts of the state saying that your paper is delayed. I'm so and so. I get calls from my agents. Wow. And there is a, a seamless interaction happening all the time. Because you know, like for them, it's very important that they get the newspaper on time. Or they see there's a problem. They they informing me. Look, I'm not getting the newspaper on time. It's not just for me. You're not delivering on time. There's something wrong. So and, and again, see. For the, yeah. One example. I, 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 uh, during this crisis, you know, this one of, uh, for example, you take one of our print centers. Now what they did, there were about 100 employees. Huh? All of them went sold in advertisement. I did not tell them to do that. It may be a small one, maybe a classified, but he knew that you know we need it. And without prompting from my end, and I get a next day I get a, you know, a link to the e-paper showing me this pages have been filled with advertisement canvas by our own people. Yeah. So the sense of ownership is there. So you feel you know like a lot of bonding. At the same time, you have to ensure that they are capable of. You know, running their own business and like running their own show, whatever area they're working. So we empower them, we teach them, we try to improve them and question them. All that goes on. Oh, that's very good to hear. 
so uh, let me just move on and take some audience audience questions we have uh, limited time now uh, one of the uh, other aspects of uh, the media business is uh, the news business you are in and you're also part of the nba and as we all know uh, news channels of almost all of them or rather all of them are now free to air uh, how do you like nba the news broadcasters association to take up issues related to the uh, news television industry with the government and other stakeholders because you know uh, the news tv business has become more fragmented and also tougher from both sides the advertising pressures as well as pressures coming from cable operators on carriage fee and other aspects what is your out of the business and what do you think uh, nba can do to kind of you know do that the subscription revenue for news channels are very limited and very few are paid channels So NBA is focusing a lot on regulatory issues because you know try and other things. A lot of legal issues are there, and you know like trying to help channels to uh, if there is any problem to overcome that, coordinate a lot of things. And uh, as far as you know, like as I said, it's your business model is yours. NBA yes. can give guidance, but cannot tell a business house news channel is this how you do your business. It can't be done. Right, it's a free market. Yes, a lot of work, uh, you know, like addressing the issues of uh, 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 news broadcasters. A lot of work. It's a day-to-day -day work. If you ask me, I get ten mails a day. I'm not exaggerating. I can imagine. I mean, NBA is a very kind of passionate body about what's happening in the news ecosystem and anyway news has become as we all like to say it's become a mainline topic for consumers also now unlike 20 years back where engagement with news was limited uh, news has become a drawing room conversation for us from board rooms it has come into our drawing rooms so it is a very important topic let me pick up a question from kishan kumar uh, he says thank you for a great conversation shams and aval always great to hear from him uh, from you uh, one question around making consumers pay for the right content that i would like to ask as more otts and digital platforms start demanding rightful price for content along with existing subscription for cable tv and newspapers do you see a saturation point at some time if yes what will get impacted new age content platforms or established ones like tv and print subscriptions so uh, his question is that otts and digital platforms will start charging for content they are already are but that trend will go up even further so will that money impact television and print companies oh, well uh, you know like ott is the way forward for de delivering content the traditional distribution uh, system has to change but then ott requires a lot of investment as well there are you know like unless you are content rich you can't be on an ott platform that's the, right you know, so the money spent on news entertainment the share of that money is been is getting more divided among more players now that is true earlier there's probably a newspaper and you know only newspaper or probably a, a channel which you're getting it free now you're paying for netflix you're paying for amazon prime you're paying for a lot of other services the money being spent the budget yes there is there is a challenge so what we have to do as media companies we have to create the compelling content so that people will buy us absolutely i may not be able to you know like uh, showcase uh, create an ott platform and show a uh, hundred serials and you know world class cinemas i can't do that there are a lot of other things i can do so we ensure that we give compelling content so that at, you know, how, how much are you paying anyway yeah 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 when rupee 50 paisa per day for newspaper and you know like even if it's uh, you know like uh, e paper it's about how much a year 1000 and dot that's not much But you are getting, you know, like uh, news three sixty five days, three sixty days in a year. Your question is very valid. It's a question. Uh, 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 question. Yes. Valid question. Yes, this money is divided. The challenge, I think, traditional media also should address. Yes, I think, and 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 how the future of uh, consumer money for media companies gets divided between OTT, digital, and print will also uh, get determined. Uh, there's another question from uh, uh, one of the attendees. Uh, the question is, what are the lessons or changes print industry can take from the pandemic and implement? Well, a lot of things. Well, I don't think I have the time. For example, work at home. 
was never experience we never uh, you know uh, tried in uh, print i can tell you in some of our editions 90% people are working at home because if there's a containment zone we don't encourage them to come and smart way of working and i like how you can uh, there's an opportunity for you to excel in your work so deeper looking at the content you're creating the kind of business you're doing the, the ability of people all this is undergoing change that's why i said transformation is happening because of pandemic that's an opportunity did i answer the question or you that's right yes yes there's another question from uh, jaslin joseph but i think this question has been answered what is your reading on the current pandemic by when do you think we'll get out of the situation bounce back to normal or is it going to be a normal time you answered it i think that was your first answer you you expect things to be you should talk about the new normal that's right yes yes new normal is upon us upon you know, us in some ways in yeah, some ways as you said you have to move on you can't sit at home all the time yeah. and also use the business opportunity to transform your business yeah yeah see like when i said about kerala like there is a, a lot of uh, you know like uh, care being taken when people go out somewhere everybody wears a mask they sanitize they wash their hands so with lot of care people are moving out but they are moving out with they, you know with uh, uh, following all the protocol yeah. uh, given by the ministry of health in kerala So there are two questions which are similar let me uh, combine both of them uh, this is about uh, the perception uh, that newspaper were unsafe uh, during covid uh, so the question is uh, have you seen a drop in print numbers given people's perception that infection might spread through physical contact and hence it might have led to a uh, rise in tv viewing or digital consumption uh, what's your response to that yeah so initially uh, people started spreading this on social media saying that a newspaper is handled by so many people so at the ins level what we did was we did a campaign on how newspaper is printed and distributed like if you look to get look at our case is completely automated you you are touching the bundle when it's packed until then you are not touching the newspaper that's right and we keep on disinfecting our premises every week and our, you know our staff take the precaution and we ensure that you know nobody co- comes and works in our organization uh, and you know like initially there was a problem but we could overcome that problem and uh, gain copies i, I don't i don't I, i'm not saying that we are uh, uh, pre covid uh, copies we are like there is a slight drop but that drop is marginal a single digit drop so that perception was there and we could you know convince people that's no we showed videos we created ads asal manorma all of us you know like and we were using it commonly in our channels we we did a campaign on that we made people aware how it is being done and you know like we ensured that the distribution uh, people have wears the gloves mask we supply them so a lot of effort has been put put in to convince people that it's not going to happen and we could change the perception very fast and the drop in numbers is not not that they are totally single digit single that's digit right. that's right fantastic one last question before i go what's your outlook on your television business what's your vision where would you like it to be what are the things that you know you are planning with your television business say in the next 2 to 5 years that's a very big question because i don't think uh, i can justify uh, you know with my answer because a lot of thinking is going on right i feel like even if i were to start a gec am i starting going to start a, a, a gec which is typical Uh, to others or you know just competing on the same uh, ground or am i going to do something else that's something you are contemplating or you want to be a me too or you want to change the game that's right that's what we are looking at let's see uh, thinking about it and right now there's not the time to start a new business so our entire focus is on as i said transforming and ensuring that uh, people are safe and the uh, safe and the business is doing well giving confidence to people uh, to our advertisers to our uh, you know like yes. to the consumer everybody is succeeding to a large extent there and uh, uh, i presume you plan to over index in your digital business because you know consumers are also consuming more and more digital yeah. content sure. news sure. right fantastic thank you mr kumar thank you for giving us time and uh, congratulations again uh, for your entry into the rajya sabha uh, we hope you take up uh, issues uh, as you said very close to the heart of the common man especially uh, the farmers in the uh, house of uh, in the upper house of the country and we look forward to having a, a environmentalist at heart kind of person 
like you it is very much needed for this country and uh, happy onam to all of you back in kerala from uh, all of us i hope you are safe and everybody at matrubhumi and in your family is safe until until we meet physically uh, uh, goodbye from all of us and happy onam again thank, thank you, you thank you so much for being part of this opportunity bye thank you thank you so much